<laughs> oh, it's just another humdrum day. We're going to be vanilla today. Are you kidding me? If you're listening to this thing, you better get rocked up, get amped up, but don't hit anybody. Okay, maybe just a little bit. That that guy just a little left, side swipe. You know what? Just a little fender bump. He and don't be afraid to roll that window down and teach him a flag. lesson. Let him know. Let him know that that guy was in the wrong. And I don't care how many. Please be patient, student driver stickers you got the back. You are not driving. The well, record is four. We sit at four still holds. Yeah. Four student driver records. Students, <laughs> student drivers. As if one wasn't enough, I got four. Oh, my God. Oh, so the other day, I just somebody saw somebody get in that car. I was like, uh, dude, there's no way. I mean, you're older than me. It should be senior driver. Stay back. Now, that's that would work. Stuff, right? That would keep me away. Absolutely. 100% keep me away. All right. Alan, enough about driving. So... <laughs> Really? Can't we talk more about that? People would love that. Well, all right. Just don't every stay focused. All right. Because everybody knows that I love to travel. And if you listen to this podcast, you know that I'm usually doing all the traveling, but somebody just got done just outdoing me, had to big day to me. So welcome back. Bon viaggio. And Buongiorno. Buongiorno. So come stai. Hey, see, he's already he came back from Italy. So now Alan, the tallest white English guy you've ever met in your life. Uh, went to Italy and has come back, and next thing you know, he's got a beret on, he's got the things on, he's he's got the Italian flag, and he says, "I'm going back. I'm a Ferrari." You know what my favorite part of being in Italy was, knowing that you were sitting at home alone that weekend with nothing to do for I'm, once. Honestly, I'm the one. I all right. Yeah. So to be fair, yeah, I was home alone by myself, and you know what I did? I watched Stanley Tucci's Eating Italy, and I was thinking about you the whole time, going. <laughs> That should be me. I mean, I should be happy for my friend. He's enjoying his anniversary with his lovely wife. So I'm so glad you got to go to the mother country and eat some amazing food and see some amazing people. Yeah, I learned uh, I learned two things. We pay way too much for wine here. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. And we overcook our pasta. Yeah, they love al dente over there. Right, I mean, so it's I seriously other... al dente. Yeah, I know. I, I'm so I, that's a, the one hard part for me when I go uh there i liked it did you well and they t- i got i i was told this by two different people that apparently it's healthier for you to eat your pasta very al dente because it takes more energy from your body to process it and absorb it and so you don't get the glycemic hit lisa are and you agreeing with him I, I just think it would burn more calories because it's more work to digest see no, I, I disagree yeah. with all of you. So I say, <laughs> I say, I down two gallons of wine over there, and I get no hangover. Love it. I love my wine over there. Did you notice that? Did you really like your wine over there? I did. Yeah, I really love yeah. my wine over there. Yeah, but I uh, love ten Italian bucks for a bottle of house wine at a nice restaurant is. Uh, and, I'm like, sign me up. So I'm a Napa snob uh, because of the big bold cabs, and I, you know, I just kind of my palate's kind of moved that way. But when we go to Italy and we start drinking wine over there. You're like, um, I need to see your wine list. And I uh, I was telling somebody, like, no, no. I, we just go, <laughs> we go, vino de, vino de casa, vino de casa. And it is amazing. It's amazing wine. You're and, Italian and you say it that poorly? Uh, that poorly. Oh, like but that. I'm American Italian. Yeah. But don't worry. A couple pops in me, it's it much better. Yeah. At least I think so. Got, All right. got the hand motions. Hey, hey. But So we told amazing stories. Mm-hmm. And so what we're really going to do is talk about how to tell even better stories today. This is very nice exciting. segue. Thank you. Uh, I worked on that on power of recall. Lisa McGuire is actually in studio with us because we dragged her all the way from the other side of Atlanta. She said, I'm going to brave traffic. I'm going to knock people out of the way. Now I'm going to know how to drive home better because you guys have taught me how. So Lisa, thank you so much for making it all the way over here. You side for... swipe them and give them the finger. That's what we taught Lisa already, right? Well, we are teachers. <laughs> <laughs> And she, she did have a background in academia before she started her business. So there you go. Now she knows that, thank God, these people did not afford their I think she's going to send our- a note home to your dad. <laughs> dad, it wasn't me. I did not. <laughs> Just for the record, that was somebody else's paint on that car. And I definitely did not hit him. He hit me. Okay. Back to- Lisa, thank you so much for coming in the studio. Lisa McGuire is an incredible coach who can help you build the story brand of your business. And... Um, what she doesn't know is that I actually have been cyber stalking her as well. How do you, uh, have the time to stalk so many people? Cause I'm not going to Italy, Alan. Oh, You're right. I'm sitting that... at home with nothing else to do. I can only watch so many Stanley Tucci episodes and watch the food. I got to start stalking somebody else. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. I'm not bitter. Okay, maybe a little... <laughs> Just a lot. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a lot. <laughs> That's why I didn't send you very many photos because I knew you were just seething. Yeah, I bet you signed up for three vacations. While he you're... sent me one video of this guy singing, and he goes, and he wrote, wrote, "This actually is bringing me to tears," and and I'm I'm crying. 
listening to it. I'm not even there because I know what he's experiencing is this amazing sound that you can't replicate in this corner because of all the houses around it, right? And it's just, he's booming and it's echoing just perfectly. It was our last night in Rome. Oh, We're nice. walking home after dinner and there's just a man by himself singing opera like Pavarotti and it I just started tearing up. I teared I, up. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I teared up for you because I knew. As I said, it was like getting... Rome saying goodbye to us. And it was. Yeah. I read for their Jake. Go yeah. back to the podcast. It's time to get back and kick Chris in line because don't ever leave me alone again. As as we talked about this before. <laughs> How did it feel? I mean, that's what I feel like almost every weekend. You're in Vegas and you're in Cabo and Barcelona. Well, okay. and... So I have a rebound. Uh, so this weekend I'm going to the beach because I couldn't take it anymore. I can't sit at home one more weekend. That was two weekends in a row. That's enough. I had to go. So I'm going to the beach. We're going down to the Garden and Gun Experience down in Charleston and Kiowa. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Should we talk to our guest? I guess we should. Yeah. Lisa, we, we tried to introduce her, but it had to go back to Alan again. <laughs> oh, here we go. Story, story, story. Alan, 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 Alan. All right. Let's back, go back to Lisa. You know, Lisa, thank you for 142 episodes. I finally get a little bit of limelight, Lisa. You Just a there little. You. He thinks Chris, he is, Chris but don't worry. Take it. Uh, Lisa gave me an editing uh, app right before this. Oh, gonna, <laughs> I think we're going to edit that sucker right out. <laughs> Goodbye, Alan. Hey, and welcome back to the show, everybody. I love that music. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Lisa, thank you for joining us. We're excited to talk to you. But before we get into this, where the hell are you from? Uh, <laughs> so charming. Thank you. Send another note home to his father, would you, Lisa? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, first of all, so much for having me here. I can tell it's going to be a great conversation, but I live in Atlanta, not that far from here. It sounds like the other side of town by, by the time you go through traffic. you know. Can't, and I got a driving lesson, apparently, for yeah. before I got Yeah, you get home much easier. Yeah. Uh, originally, yeah. Originally, I grew up in the Midwest and came down to Atlanta, Um We'll just say last century. We'll leave it like that. So I've I've been here more than anywhere else. I love the area. It's close to the beach, close to the mountains, and you know you can get to anywhere through Hartsfield Jackson. That's right, like Rome, for example. You did get there, yeah, in one night in Rome. Yep. He actually texted me. He says, "I'm here." I'm like, "Yes, I'm in the Delta Crown Club." Yeah, yeah, I, I'm aware of that, Alan. Yes, we're flying first class. Yes, I I knew that too, Alan. I'm just gonna go to bed now. <laughs> no, I was excited. You know, I'm a I was yeah. I know you were. Here. That was really fun. It was. So, Lisa, you've been on here for quite a while. Uh, your start, you didn't start your business right off the bat. So what did you do? What was your background before you got into your business? So, as I said, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Ohio. And the whole thing that there was to do was really just learn. And one of my memories was going to the bookmobile. And so learning turned into what are you going to do when you grow up? Well, I decided I'd be a teacher. I love to learn. Became a teacher. Education brought me to this area as well. Um, I ended up um, working quite a while with middle school and high school students and became one of the founders of a private faith-based school in Atlanta. It was a great experience, but when my job there was done, when I did what I came to do, um, I decided, you know, I wanted to do something different because I could do that with my eyes closed. Um, and so it hmm. was really interesting. It was almost a message that dropped out from nowhere of, I think I'll start my own business. Now, that is not typical of most people, but I grew up at the feet of uh, my parents were serial entrepreneurs. They had about six different businesses, and my grandfather started out with a little general store. So it was in my blood, whether I knew it or not. Your parents worked together in the business? Yes, they worked together in the business. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So, yes. Yeah. Tell <laughs> Chris know. what that's, that's like. No, 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 I'm good. Yeah, no, we'll just skip over that. One. Yeah, boy, God bless them. They call right? you therapist one more what, time. What's funny is that she said I grew up in the middle of Ohio, so I did what everybody did, and the whole time I'm like, you got drunk in the cornfield. Yeah, so smoked, like, a lot, smoked a lot. <laughs> no, I, I we used to go out. Well, I grew up in Michigan, and uh, <laughs> not much there. <laughs> exactly the same thing. So we went to the cornfields and got drunk. No, she's over in the bookmobile. Damn it. <laughs> Guess we know the future farmers of America, <laughs> what they were doing, and then there was Lisa. Okay, yeah, so exactly. back to <laughs> education. So mom and dad were entrepreneurs and you saw it, but you were off doing your thing. And But you started a bit, you started a school. You're a part of that. Yes. I mean, you felt like you were a part of something there though, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. It was really a mission, a vision to create something different and alternative for what we have in, you know, was great education in this area, but we wanted to have an alternative for people. So coming together, it was fun. We had uh, quite a few well-known people that were involved in it. So being able to have community meetings and build a 
movement to create a school was amazing. Um, and we really wanted to do something that was, you know, I, re I still remember having the conversations traditionally in the South, private education was founded to keep out other people. All right. So we wanted to have something that was different, that was very inclusionary, that was about, you know, when you're talking about a faith-based education, my philosophy on that is what is heaven going to look like? You're going to have everyone there, right? You're not going to pick people God out. God forbid, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you're not going to keep some people out and, and not others. <laughs> I'm Sp sorry. Spoke, spoken, like, <laughs> spoken like a true minister's son. No, not everybody gets in, Ellen. That's right. That's right. But it was it was really important to bring, you know, just be a community school and bring all that other. So I'm sorry, I'm being too serious. <laughs> you're, 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 you, you are. I'm sorry. Y yes, you are. But I just cracked myself. With it. No. OK, a lot, lot, we're, we're processing a lot of demons over on this side. Yeah, so I all right, see. Lisa, continue. Yeah. So anyway, we, we did that. It was great. And it was great to build it from the ground up community school, bring in children. And the thing I loved was being able to see how we could transform lives. So again, another big noble cause. That's huge. Yes. Wow. And, and then you stepped away from it. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Because really it was building the foundation. You know, if you... <laughs> It, well, middle school kids. Yeah, that would be Yeah. Too. The, yeah. But, I, mean, <laughs> I was going to say, bless your heart, when she said middle school. I mean, that yeah. is right up there with uh, hospice workers and people that I hold on a high pedestal. Oh, boy. Yeah. They're, they're really, really such sweet kids. I remember when I first started talking or teaching middle school, my principal said, one minute they're playing with G.I. Joe and the other minute they're looking at Playboy. They don't know who they are. And so talk about being challenging. You know, they're really is a very exciting time. So Alan, your son's an educator as well. Uh, what Does he teach high school kids or middle school? So he was a, a public high school teacher and I don't think they were very sweet. And now he's in private and does high school and middle school. And middle school. Yeah. <laughs> you got to use that G.I. Joe and Playboy. Like yeah. that. That's <laughs> Well, it stuck with me. <laughs> it's, it's sticking with me because, <laughs> because, I, because I'm an educator. <laughs> Did that sound serious? Oh, damn it. She's probably right, though. I mean, uh, well, you didn't I, have a GI Joe, though, did you? <laughs> damn it! Yeah. I, I I was a good guy with the Catholic school. Yeah. All right. All right, Sister Mary Catherine. I did not did not bring that Playboy in. It was Jerry, not me. Okay, I get that off my chest. Thank you. All right, back to Lisa. <laughs> okay, so you're educating. You're doing all this, and, and as that. to Alan's point, you said, you know what? I'm going to start my own biz. Yeah. I'm going to start my own business. And, you know, it's so funny because I remember hearing my dad tell this story. He was working on the Frigidaire factory line, but the day I was born, he quit his job. And I always think back, my mom was probably thinking, what are you doing? But he ended up starting out pouring concrete. And so he was um, had a company that poured the concrete slabs, all of that for 55,000 homes in Huber Heights, Ohio. So built that, ended up going into land development so those big yellow uh, Caterpillar, all the pieces of equipment. I knew how to drive a bulldozer at one time. So that was fun. I got to do that. Oh, come on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if, if some kid started acting up, you'd say, son, I could bulldoze your. Bulldoze you. <laughs> you, you, you. Did you ever use that line? No, but it is my, what is the one thing you would never guess about me? It's I can oh, drive perfect. a bulldozer. So now I've like told the world that. So I've got to come up with something. Yeah, else. you're going to come up with something yeah. else. Oh, yes. Yeah, did you think you were really good at it? No, I was terrified because yeah. um, the project we were on, we had a piece of land and my father was building an additional nine holes onto an existing golf course. And so he was working to smooth the dirt out on the green. And he put me behind the, you know, behind the engine, the blade or the, you know, the dashboard. And he got in the golf cart and drove away and left me. <laughs> He's like, just keep turning left. Just keep turning left. So the eighth green is your. Yeah, that's yeah, mine. That's yours. You know, I think I played that green in Huber Heights. And I, you know what? Now I know who to blame for my four Please. putt. Yeah. And that's, yeah like, in fact, every time I, uneven. every time I three putt a green, I'm like, Please stop. Yes, <laughs> Please stop. Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> I was terrified though. I was terrified. Right. I know the first time I, I, uh, like you, I get a chance to go on, uh, some big equipment too. My uncle was in that, mm -hmm. but after the first couple of times, like I go back over the summer, I'm like, I'm really good. And then I look back on it and I was like, yeah. they all ran. I thought they were leaving me alone. They're all afraid. I was just going to take the backhoe and just like whack them. 
<laughs> yeah, but those experiences, like today, I still smell dirt and think of my father. So I love the smell of dirt. And I've worked with a lot of trades, construction companies, things like that. I just, I understand the people. I understand some of the challenges that they're dealing with. So that experience has been able to serve me well in my business today. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Uh, man, I just love that. I actually, I'm, I'm actually thinking about right now, just, I just want to get behind one right now and just trying to drive it around a little bit. No, probably not. Be patient, student driver. That's right. <laughs> we'll put that with the back of the dozers now. A bumper sticker on that one. Yes. All right. So uh, when you started your biz, let's talk about that because that's a big leap for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you made that choice. And um, you, so you went and uh, married still. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, and so you started this business. So you went, your husband said, you know what? Got this job and stuff, but uh, now I'm going to start my own business. Right. <laughs> and he went, oh, I am so supportive. What can I do to help? Is that how it went? Well, how it really went was there was uh, a situation in which there were several of us. It was decided that our positions would be dissolved. And so I had that decision made for me, mm -hmm. which really the extruded entrepreneur. So yes. a great common theme for a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Sometimes it chooses you. Sometimes you choose it. Sometimes you don't even know what's happening. Somebody gives it to you. So somebody said, Hey, Lisa, we're going to downsize you. Yes. And you yes. said, can I give you a student driver? No. Can I give you a side swipe? No. <laughs> can I give you a finger? No. You said, I'm going to start my own business. But first I said, that must have been really hard for you to tell me. It uh, was really. Uh, is that Would that have ever crossed your mind, Chris? It, it just. To be empathetic for the person who just. It popped out of my mouth and I thought, where did that come from? Oh, thank God you said that. Okay, good. Because uh, Lisa, <laughs> we're going to end this podcast because we're not of the two same minds. That's exactly. What, in fact, when somebody says, hey, Chris. Um, I know you thought your raise was going to be X. Uh, it's actually going to be X divided by two. Um, I wasn't like, oh, that must have been really hard for you to tell me. That's not exactly how it came out of my mouth back in the corporate world. No. Huh? Exactly. Right? You you either, buddy. Don't you act high and mighty. <laughs> you were right there with me going, are you flipping kid? Do you know who I am? Huh? Do you know who I am? So Lisa didn't do that. She didn't go, do you know who I am? Are you doing that to me? Huh? Okay. I got something for you, buddy. Okay. Okay. It's not going to go so well. We're going to the train station, my friends. <laughs> She said, oh, that must have been so hard. Yes. And then when I caught my breath and, you know, on the walk out of the building, my friend's walking me out. And I said, you know, I think I'm going to start my own business. And they, I, that I was shocked more than anyone else. I'm like, what are you thinking? What are you going to do? I have no idea. So it took me a few weeks to kind of figure out where I was and what I was doing because I'd poured so much of everything in my life into that, you know, to, to grow it from the startup. I knew every child, I knew everyone in the school. Um, and so it really was a, an opportunity for me to understand a really valuable lesson. Who you are is not what you do. Who you Amen. are is not what you do. Amen. And I think that lesson is not one that is learned unless you go through an experience like that. It's tougher in the States too, because I think, you know, we are just so driven here, you know, to succeed. And the first question you're asked at a mixer is what do you do? And, and I've learned that, you know, you got to be careful with that because they, they're not curious about what you do. They want to know where you are in the pecking order. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They do. They really do. All right. You, that's a good one. All right. That, all right. Those were two great, I, I wrote hers now, who you are is not what you do. And when people ask you what you do, they want to see where you are in the pecking order. Yeah. All right, Ellen. It's a really great point. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah. You. Well, we keep score. One and zero. It's, it's one zero. So, <clears throat> and don't worry, I'm not petty, but it's coming. You're going down. All right. So very thoughtful. You did this. Um, and at the time, obviously, well, in that situation, your husband just would have went O M G. I think my whole family was like, what happened? Because I was probably the last person that was going to happen to. But looking back at it, I am very grateful it happened because I would not be doing what I was today. I would have probably been there until, you know, they carried me out of there. And at that point, I wasn't going anytime soon. But it really gave me an opportunity to do something to make an impact in the world more so than what I had been doing before. You had a greater purpose. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Wow. And you know what? She wouldn't be here if that happened. So I'm thrilled that she's That's here. That's right. So we can sit here and go. And had she Chris, slashed the Chris. tires of the guy that delivered the message, she wouldn't be here, Chris. You know, there's a consequence. I mean, not for nothing, but uh, I'm not saying slashing tires, but definitely, you know, cutting gas lines, water bills. Um, Break line. You know, maybe a little maybe a little fl uh, flood, maybe a little fire at the house. No big deal, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm hypothetically, of course. I mean, I'm just, 
not me. I'm just saying hypothetically. Sure. Somebody else who may be a little pettier really than me. It's terrible when things like that happen, isn't it? No, it does oh, suck. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, you mean the, the fire and the flood? Yeah, yeah. yeah it depends it's, on what you know, you're after, after you yeah. burn down their house, you're like, oh, that's too bad. I left my card, though. I'm like, hey, if you need some help on the house, house repairs. <laughs> I, I know someone, Fred. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> call the trusted toolbox. We help with floods and fires. Uh, those tires, not so much. So that's why I stay away from the tires. No, but she didn't. She took the high road. She showed that uh, she lived the bookmobile, faith-based, uh, truly had a great life and doing a lot better than some of us here at the table. Some of us. <laughs> Alan. Some. I'm sorry. I'll do better. Okay, thank you. All right, I just want to make some make sure you admitted it. No, okay, maybe me. All right, so you you're thinking through this, you're ginning up. Was this your first idea? Was this was there, were there other ideas you had? Well, it was really funny. I I had coffee, which was one of the things I learned when you start your own business, you go have coffee, which is funny because I don't drink coffee, but I you know, you go sit in a coffee shop and you have a beverage. And I was meeting with uh I was meeting with uh my former uh, boss and uh, he had a conversation, isn't that? Yes, I was meeting with my former, not the one that told me the the position was dissolved, but this was somebody else that I I met with. So a mentor, former boss, and he said, um, "What are you going to do?" And I said, "I really don't know." And he said, "Well, you're going to have to go out and network." And the reason why that was a, a point of conversation is he knew that I would rather have my teeth cleaned with whatever terrible thing like, sandpaper yeah it, like that was the worst it was word. like steel wool but yeah i mean as long as we're going to, for, for torture yeah. i mean hypothetically again of course i don't know <laughs> but that was like that was like the worst thing you could have said to me and i said yes i know but i'm gonna figure it out right so so you're in that corporate america world uh, yes. and you go and then you say oh by the way let's go get a coffee i don't drink coffee uh lisa that's not the yeah. point Okay, so we have to do the coffee clutch, yeah. right? That's what we yeah. do in networking, and we have to get out there. So Al and I are huge fans of networking, yeah. but when you do it, you don't do that in the corporate world. I mean, we did it networking in the corporate world just to gain competitive advantage, mm -hmm. to get to know guys. We didn't know that that's what we were doing, but running our own businesses, you realize it's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you're like, what is this cult crap yeah. of networking? What do you do? How do you do it? Oh, what do you do? How do you do it? Oh, let's change out cards. Oh, well, okay. who can I connect you with? I'm like, connect me with, man. I, I'm going to connect you with something. What are you talking about? No. So you had to go learn to network as an introvert, as somebody who didn't oh, want to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was always the one in the background to make everybody look good and to, and to really just make everything happen and make sure it was just on point. I even remember once I got into networking at one point, this younger gentleman, I asked him for coffee and he said, I'd love to go, but could you tell me what we're going to do when we get there? Right. <laughs> like he did, he really didn't know what it was. Now. He was maybe 24. You know, I don't know if he thought I was hitting on him or something like yeah. that. But anyway. Yeah, that's right. I actually that's exactly where I went. I'm like, look, dude, I did not bring the Playboys. Okay. Again, I'm just asking you to coffee, son. Okay. We're talking business here, son. Yeah. Okay, exactly. work with me. <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter eyes that, up here that would be so I, I don't think anybody's ever asked me if i've done that if you're like hey man you want to grab a car i've never had anybody go what are you going to talk about because <laughs> if they would have done that i'm like okay that's creepy we're going to stop this right now because i ain't getting coffee with you if you think that's what i was creeping out about doing yeah. i'm trying to grow my business bro yeah but i have grown to <laughs> i've grown to love it i love networking i love connecting people finding out what what they do who they need to meet and really what drives them. Because I have been, you talked about purpose, uh, Alan, I have been seeking and chasing purpose since I was 10 years old. That is a very heavy topic for someone so young, but it has been a thread that's gone throughout my life. That's what she learned at the bookmobile when it is. you were out smoking cigarettes in the pasture. I Just for the record, I wasn't smoking cigarettes. You were, but I drank a lot of beer. And in fact, okay. that was a really good beer bar. <laughs> it was really good. I mean, enough of it. I mean, I'm mean, sure. How many, what was your record of beers in the bong? Did you do three? Look at the look on your face. What I mean, Four. really? Four. He's he's well, very that's a humble. Big here. funnel. It was. It was. It, it was. Hey, I went to Michigan Tech, bro. I mean, we had to go in the middle of nowhere. I mean, and I grew up in the cornfields, <laughs> so we had to do something. All right, back to purpose. And Lisa, please, can we? Okay. All right, not me and beer drinking. All right, which I'm really good at. Just again, for the record. Apparently so. Do I get a point for that? 
not, not okay. Right. Back to Lisa. Competition later. <laughs> so, uh, so purpose, uh, I, you stayed, you stayed focused on it. You, you built on that. You built your business. Mm -hmm. You got out of your comfort zone. You're doing the networking. You're doing podcasting now. Yeah. And the name of your podcast is your passion, purpose, and personal brand. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it was with one take. That's it a was tongue twister. It is. It? I couldn't say it. I know. I mean, I was passion, totally... purpose, and personal brand. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about what you do to help people yes. with that, because this is the stuff that I was like, oh yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun in this podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think the thing is, is when people start their business, you know, like Alan, you were talking about, what do you do? All right. Well, the last thing you want to say is, you know, I'm an accountant or I'm a financial advisor or what, fill in the blank, whatever it is that you are. Because here's what happens in people's minds. As soon as you say, I'm a financial advisor, they open the virtual file cabinet, the file drawer, they open it up, they look for the folder that says financial advisor, and they virtually drop your name in that file, close the drawer, and they stop listening to you because they think they already know what you do. Hmm. Yo, know, she stunned you on that one, didn't she, bro? Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, she, dropped, she dropped this on me uh, as we were getting ready to talk about the podcast uh, and get coming on. I was like, ooh, that's deep, dude. And like, you know what? She's right. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, and, and now I'll give you props back, right? I always leave with, hey, what do you do? Because that's how I identify where you are. Mm hmm. Um, but I, I don't see Peck. You're so superficial. I am really. Um, you know, where's your car parked? <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Student driver stickers. So, all right. So you, you're right. So what should we, and, and, well, that's what you did. So you worked on this. So let's go back to how you help people with that. Yeah. So I, I think the thing is, is we have our person that we serve. We have our ideal client. We have our service offering or our product, but how do you connect the two? How do you connect what you do, the, the value you bring to the world with the right target person? And I hate using the word target, but with the person who has the problem that you want to solve, the person that you are uniquely wired to solve that problem, they're out there looking for you. They're desperately looking for you and you're looking for them. So how do you make that match? You've got to have a customer or client centric message that calls out to them. So this goes to, uh, and I'm putting my glasses on so I'm smarter. LinkedIn says you're the top personal branding voice. I am a top personal branding no. voice. I'm not oh, it is. a it's, top person. No, I'm hey, gonna say, you know what? Editorial advice uh, here at the podcast. Let well, it roll. Let it be. Right, go with it. Go well, with it, girl. I am the, yes. That's, That's right. right. Oh, my God. <laughs> in, in fact, she's wearing the shirt. says, I am the. She's just being humble. This is Very the beautiful. top personal branding voice but in the room. We don't do humble on this shit, man. Let's go. <laughs> uh, screw that. Let's go. So what should that financial plan? Because you're right. And and I was I was actually laughing to myself when you were talking about getting involved in networking at first. And you're an introvert. I'm an introvert. I'm uh -huh. a gregarious introvert, but I'm an introvert. And you get out there and you think, oh, I'm, I'm going to network and I'm going to build my network. And what you find out is you're getting hit up for financial planning, mm -hmm. insurance sales, stuff that you don't, you know, I mean, you're just trying to, you're just trying to, you know, meet people that can help you connect and then you'll help them connect. But, you know, suddenly you've got this target on your back. Right, right. Exactly. So, yeah. So what should that, uh, that, that um, financial services person say? Yeah. So I think the thing is, is we want to catch people's attention in a very unique way. And we also want to turn them into a member of our sales team. So the thing about networking that I believe many people do not realize is the person across the table from you is not your prospect. Yes. Right. It may be, but what you're doing is you're trying to help them figure out who you can connect them to. And it should be likewise. So when you sit down to have a conversation with someone and they start pitching you immediately, mm -mm. then it's, you know, learning the finesse to turn the conversation. We call that a leg humper. Mm. Well, I could see that. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she probably had not heard that one. She's probably you know doesn't use that. You now are two up on me because that one I'm going to give you props for because I think we just shocked Lisa and she's like, um, I'm going to go pray for their souls. Yeah. No, no not at all. I okay. have four dogs, so I get it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's... 
about as perfect a description, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But to answer your question, you really want to start talking about the problem and who has that problem. So I know a financial advisor, for example, she serves women who are either widowed or divorced and have never learned how to manage their finances. That's super niche. It is. But there's a reason why she does it, is she experienced that seeing it with her mom. So that pain is within her. So she's trying to heal that and help other people. So she would start out saying, I know I'm getting deep. No, no. No, yeah. we like deep. Don't, don't. Yeah. As I, superficial I'm, as we appear, I actually, we really actually, I, like, yeah. So she, she looked at me because I was rolling my eyes. I'm not rolling my eyes. I was like, oh my God, that's so good. I'm trying to write this stuff. <laughs> it was an eye flutter. That was a crit. That was an eye flutter. It yeah. really was. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I proclaimed. Oh my God. She's in here in the room with us. So what you might say is, you know how many women end up that are widowed or divorced have never managed their finances? I help them. So what you, and you know, I help them manage and make their great financial decisions so they never have to worry about retirement, whatever, something like that. But what you're doing in that is you're talking about who you serve. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the problem they have. You're talking about what you actually do for them. And the last part is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What are they able to do? So when you do that, and when you do that as an elevator pitch, so let's say, you know, you go to a local chamber or networking event, you get 25 seconds to stand up. This is great to say who you serve, what is the problem, what you do, and how you're going to make their life better. You mean you don't grab the microphone and seize it with both hands and just <laughs> go for five minutes to where everybody wants to kill you? No, that's oh. that not not good. All right, not for, no, no, I've never done that because <laughs> actually the guy who does that, Chris is out there going, which car is his? Uh, <laughs> that's uh, right. He's not driving away today. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Those he's getting an Uber. But they, but they think they're the best, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're going on and mm -hmm. on and on, like I am now. But stay with me, guys. Hey, and if you're still driving in the car. Don't forget, uh, I wrote a book. Uh, Lisa's uh, totally on this stuff, but we got to get back to Lisa. But uh, so back. <laughs> Thanks for looking at me when you were feeling guilty. Right, I was. Yeah. But that's the thing, right? So 25 seconds, who, what, and how. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things, we talk about this in my sales process in my company, people buy to get away from pain more than they do to mm -hmm. go to pleasure. And I said, that's a big part of this because we do a lot of break, fix. Give break. yourself one on that, Chris. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. My sales process. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm telling you, man, we are down some stuff. You here. know what I like about that, though? Besides the fact that it's efficient, is it's kind of a third person mm -hmm. scenario. So instead of I'm a financial planner and immediately my guard goes up like, oh, crap, here comes the pitch. Mm -hmm. you, you're actually saying what you do in a way that's interesting and also gives me a little bit of comfort yeah. that you're not necessarily coming after me. Right. Exactly. Because yeah. what you're doing, it's really, a, it's, it's a very short story you're telling, mm -hmm. you know, you're telling that story there and those people that stand up and go on for five minutes, what they're doing is they are trying to make a sale before they walk out the door. And that doesn't happen. Mm -mm. That doesn't happen. It, 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 yeah, it turns people off. So by being able to encapsulate that story you're not only She's using a lot of multi syllable -like words, dude. I'm over here writing uh, like a fiend, and I'm looking up and actually, <laughs> actually, she and, and she actually said this script. I was like, Yeah, I'm producing that thing because I mean, she's I said, Clearly, I spent way too many, way too many weekends <laughs> in the cornfield. Corn. <laughs> I should have been at the bookmobile, <laughs> yeah. all right. But yeah, but what happens is you turn that room into your sales force, yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the whole goal. And that's what networking, you're looking for door openers, strategic partners. You're not looking for clients in there. But it doesn't happen that one. And back to uh, mm -hmm. Ellen's point again, it was a good, mm -hmm. the leg humper thing. Mm -hmm. You guys talk about this networking. You have to know, like, and trust people. Yes. That's a phrase we always use. And mm -hmm. it takes time, right? This mm -hmm. is not an overnight success no. story. Like if you're starting your own business and you're going out there. And so let's go back to when you started your business. So, hey, look, <clears throat> I had this uh, job and they let me go. You know what? I say, God bless them. You know, my friend Chris that I met, now looking back on it, he said a couple other things. But i got to go forward. we got to all make money. So i got to make money. So networking takes a minute, right? Yes. And as we talk about that, that's a long play. That doesn't happen like instantaneously. No. So you got to make that phone ring. 
Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, how'd you make that phone ring? How'd you get that first yeah, call? Yeah, uh, really great question. So um, get a point for that oh, one. <laughs> really? Come on. That Wait. was a reflexive answer. Oh, you know that. Yes. No, it wasn't. Come so, on. And, and I coach people who start their own business because this is a really very hard thing. Um, I just want to say, I was talking to some guy a few weeks ago. He lives in Austin, Texas. Okay. Left the corporate world, wants to be an executive coach. He said, you know, how are th- I said, how are things going? Well, they're going pretty well. Well, then when you get further into the conversation, then the real story comes out. He says, I was very successful in corporate America. I was a Marine. I was deployed twice. I lost my dad when I was young. I've been divorced. Nothing, nothing is as hard as starting this business. Wow. Yeah. So think about can we, that. Can we pause for a minute? I have to cry. <laughs> well, He's right, though. I mean, yes. and I'm not a Marine, and I've not been deployed. Yes, and yeah. uh, not divorced. Okay, so let's keep thinking. Yeah, but but no, it is very hard. So the first thing, and this is what I this is what I advise people to do, <laughs> is yet yes yeah is who I started is... my own business. <laughs> kind of a recipe for divorce. Exactly. Anyway, so it's, it's hard, right? It All right, is, so go. Yeah, All right, what yeah. happened? Is who do you know that you could go ahead and do some work for them, whether it is a discounted rate, whether it's somebody that you can white label business for, which is where they are selling it as their product, but you're working behind the scenes, so you don't have any client contact to do that. So I had an agency in Atlanta that I had been very successful working with. And so they were very kind to give me some work. And so I white labeled for them to get some reps in because at that point I had gone to Nashville. I had signed up for Donald Miller's uh, Story Brand Certified Guide Program. So I I built that um, messaging framework and I started working for people in exchange for if you are happy with my service, I would love a testimonial. Now, I wasn't doing big blown projects for them, but I was doing something like writing elevator pitches or maybe uh, writing the copy for their homepage of their website or helping them figure out what is your distinctive message to where they're like, wow, you really do know what you're doing. I got a testimonial from them because the thing is, people who don't know you, sure, you're going to say you know what you're doing. But it's they're looking at that third party social proof. They're looking at those testimonials to know, do I trust them? Are they an expert and are they going to deliver? Can I ask you why you chose the Donald Miller program? Yeah. So there's no, he does not get a good question there. That that was not one because her face said great question, but more than the words that she delivered. Two and a half to one, two and a half to one, two and a half. (laughs) Well, it was really funny how I came across that process. This was when I was still with the school and one of my roles was uh, heading up communications and marketing and many other different things I did there. But we were in a planning meeting for a fundraising session. Okay. And we had a few people that were on the committee. One guy was doing production. And so we're trying to figure out what is our theme? What were we going to do? So this guy gets up, marker by the whiteboard, and he's like, okay, Who is our audience? Who are we talking to? We're talking to the parents. What is the one thing they want? And so he goes through that. What is the obvious problem they have to solve? So if you are familiar with the story brand framework, we've just gone into the second thing. Who is the character and what are the three levels of problems? Well, we got through most of it and he had to leave. Ben had to leave. And as he left, I I left the meeting. I ran out into the parking lot after him. And I said, what was that that you did? I have to know about. Mm. So I was still employed at the school at the time. He goes, well, you know, it's this framework and, you know, you can learn it, but it's kind of expensive to go. He was one of the first guides uh, StoryBrand had certified. And he said, but they do have an online course. So the minute, (laughs) July 1st, the next year when my budget hit, I signed up for that digital course. And Mm. so I took it. And I tried implementing the framework and it was really hard to do, which, you know, Don Miller is not silly in what he did. He tells you enough so you can learn to want it, but he doesn't tell you how to do it, right? It's very hard. So when I was here with some time on my hands, you know, found myself uh, as a new entrepreneur and thought, what am I going to do? I knew I was great at messaging. And so up on my computer came a retargeted ad because I had purchased that online course. 
no accident, it says, come to Nashville, be a story brand guide. I took a little bit of my severance and invested that. And that's what helped me get going. Uh, all right. So uh, great on the retargeting. Another great message for everybody. Yes. Uh, if you don't do retargeting now, you should. Yes. Because guys, by the way. Explain, the, I think maybe some people need to explain. All right. What you think, but... uh, let me back this up. So uh, I have a home uh, remodeling and a handyman company here in Atlanta called the Trusted Toolbox. And if you go to my website and you go away to my from my website after checking us out and you go to Facebook. Um, or you go out to Instagram, it will get retargeted and you'll get a ad uh, served up to you saying, do you need some handyman work? Do you need mm -hmm. a wood rot? Do you need some drywall? Do you need a bathroom model? Do you need a kitchen remodel? Depending on what you looked at on my uh, website, I go back and retarget you and I hit you with that sponsored ad. This is all legal. We can all do it. It's happening. Super powerful. It's super powerful. And I'll tell you, especially with AI coming uh, down the road, which I, I hate it. It's, right now it's getting way overused. Um, it's going to be. Did you just say you hated AI? Because uh, no, I love have... AI. I know you do. Yeah, I do. Uh, actually, Uzar just came out. Uh, by the way, and it's blown up. What is uh, the AI? The HI, uh, HVAC AI guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blown up on the. Yeah, scene. no, that was a great episode. But back to uh, the guest at hand. Yeah, which is most important of because course. she is the most important person in the room. <laughs> Talking about the story brand, <laughs> one of the things you did that I want to—that's the big thing I want to talk about. When to coach, when not to coach. When should I get a coach? When should I not get a coach? You At the point that you did the story brand buy-in, how much were you making in your business? Oh, I was six weeks into into my business. Zero. Zero. Right. right. And so you decided to drop not, it doesn't matter the number. You don't even have to tell us. Mm -hmm. Five, 15, 20 grand. It wasn't mm -hmm. 500 bucks. No. It, it was a lot of money. It was when I called my sister, she said, are you freaking nuts? Yeah. Like, that's what she said. <laughs> You've got to be crazy. And I said, nope. I knew it in my gut. I, I have this instinct of what is right to do and when it's right to do it. And I knew it was right. Yeah. So investing in yourself, it's hard. It, mm -hmm. It's very hard to do. And I, you know, over the course of 16 years doing this, Alan has uh, heard me tell this story. I go in and out of coaching and I spend a lot of money and I don't spend a lot of money. And then currently I'm not being coached. Um, but I definitely need to get coached soon. So do you do you have like a certain amount of money that you need for help? And sometimes it's coaching and sometimes it's therapy and then back and forth. Is it is it no therapy is always odd. Oh, okay. That's that's a that's a whole different thing. That's on the personal side. Uh still married. So let's continue. <laughs> I started my business really sixteen years ago, but I'm still in the startup phase. Yeah. And it's really hard, my friends. Starting a business takes a tax on everybody. And uh, you, you said it. Uh, this guy uh, that you talked about, your your client, it is harder to start a business than it is to be the CEO of Coca-Cola. I am convinced of that. I have heard this over and over. And as a guy who was in corporate America, who dealt with the C-suite all the time, Alan did as well, it is a lot harder to start something than it is to run it. Yeah, because in corporate America, you're you're working with other people's money. Yeah, because you, when it's your money, and like you said, you, you invested in yourself. So you go off, you go out there, so you met Donald Miller, you get the story brand, and if you haven't heard of Donald Miller, um, we're about to learn who he is, Yeah. Uh, but what Lisa can do for you with his message. What did you learn? Why was it so good? I think why it was so good was because traditionally when we think about our business, you know, we're all into our business. We know the ins and outs. We know all the features. We know why you should buy it. We are so excited about what we do. We're experts in the industry, but your client is not. They don't know. So we start trying to impress them with all of this knowledge we have and excitement about why they should use it. And they're sitting there thinking, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Do I need this? So why I love this was because it truly was inviting your audience into the story of what it might like to be to do business with you. So when you do that, you mention that I know what you want. And I know that this is your problem and this is how it makes you feel and why it's just not right in the world. And I've been there. I've gone down that road before. And here is all the, the, the experience I have. And as you know, I'm going through the framework right now. And so here is a three-step plan. It's going to be really easy. First, we're going to do this. Then this is going to happen. And then you're going to experience this wonderful thing. 
I don't so, know about you, Ellen, but I just went through, I feel so bad about myself. And then Lisa said, but Chris, it's okay. Here's the three steps. And I'm bunching up our tablecloth right now. Goes, it's okay, Chris. It's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, yes. You know, I think I found my new therapist. She just doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> yeah. And then you just talk about the wonderful things that can happen. But So clearly it hit with you. And well, oh, how, yes. you've been doing this for how many years, though? Story brand, uh, uh, seven years for story brand, yeah. but no. naturally, I've been doing it probably 20. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're, you're very yeah. good at this, right? You, you bring people in, you make them feel that pain, and then yeah. here's how we can find your way out of that pain into this pleasure. Yes, and I think the, the key part is when someone hears, I understand your pain and it's okay because I've been there, you'll follow them all day long. That's where that trust begins. Oh, so deep. I told her, I said, we're going to have a lot of fun on this one because you're, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, we're going to go there. Personally, I'm going to go there. So I'm already bunching up everything. So it's amazing. I, if you guys aren't making a personal connection right now, that's on you, man. And so do not hit the guy in the car. All right. Stay there with me. All right. I know everybody's in the car. Maybe you're taking a run. You listen to us. That's how we know where you get us. You know, of course, you can always get us on our YouTube channel. Don't forget that because on the YouTube channel, you get to see Lisa in action. And you can see Alan and Chris cringing, especially when they hit way too close to home. Okay, mm -hmm. we're back. So uh -huh. let's talk about a story that you worked with somebody, because here's the hard part. You can go in there and say, hey, I'm a story brand coach, and I'll help you with this and that. And everybody's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm good at my business, blah, blah, blah. Make my phone ring. Tell us the story of where you got the guy <laughs> to go, bang, I understand you, and oh my God, it worked. Or a gal. I'm going to give you a good question on that because it was the one I was going to just ask. That's a backhanded one. No, it's a I'm one. taking it. All right, we're tight. Yeah. All right, go. Oh, I thought you were going. I thought you were going to. <laughs> no, it's the same. Question. No, it's uh, I, Chris, Chris. I couldn't have said it better than Chris. Thank so, you. are you looking for an audience who understood my message? No, or I want looking for a, a, client? a client. A client where you went. Oh. This guy, you know, uh, this gal, whoever. You're like, hey, I, I do the story brand thing. You're like, blah blah blah. I don't believe you. I've heard these people. And you came in and you helped them recraft their message and okay. then bang, their business took off or they got some wins. Yeah. So I, I will tell you one of my most interesting clients was Santa Claus. So that was a fun client. <laughs> Santa Claus, who runs a school oh. to train other uh, of uh, those people, just in case you've got the radio on your uh, people in the car who need to hear it, but he was training other people who are in that industry and would go out to company parties and things like that. He was that. training Santa Clauses. Yes. Yes. That's a thing. Oh yeah. God, I love it. Big America. business. Big business. I love this country. Yeah. Dude, I, honestly, when she said I trained Santa Claus, you have no idea. My mother was a huge <laughs> Santa Claus freak. And then um, yeah. my, my mother's thing was always, if you don't believe you don't get, and uh, I'm telling you, man, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to tell you, old I'm 53. I still believe. Because if my mom's gone, unfortunately passed away, but on Christmas morning, I'm looking for something coming from Santa Claus. It's not me. <laughs> and you know what? I found it. Right. Uh, two years in a row, by the way. That's really cool. You go. you, you, you've been crying a lot memory. lately, Chris. I have. Anyway, okay, so you, you train the Santa Claus. So. Yeah, so, but I think, you know, to go back to your question about the client, um, one of my most amazing messages that we came up with was for a hypnotherapist. So think about it hypnotherapy is very difficult to sell because what do people think? Oh, you're going to make me quack like a duck and, you know, mm -hmm. do crazy things. Right. So that is the hurdle if you're not familiar with hypnotherapy, but hypnotherapy can do so much good in the right situation. So helping this hypnotherapist create the message to draw in the right people and take them on their homepage. And this is the thing when you have the right client centric message on the homepage of your website, people will only stay on your website seven seconds, unless you give them a reason to stay longer. So that is where that hero section of your website needs to capture people. It needs to tell you three things. It needs to say, what do you do? How are you going to make my life better? And how do I start doing business with you? The hero section, meaning the client is the hero. Uh, so the hero section is the top section of your website. It's above the fold before you scroll down. Okay. And so that's why it's called the hero section, just like it's the big section. She's throwing lingo on you, uh, yeah. Ellen. I know it's, it's hard for you. You're old. 
at least now you're a lot younger than you. You know, I have uh, done quite well in my life asking the stupid question that nobody else would have the guts to ask. What is the hero? If the hero section is the top. Okay. That's the before you scroll. Right. So it's what you see when you go to website. It's a it is a great question. And listeners, <laughs> I would like you to just overwhelm Chris's mailbox, Chris at the trustedtoolbox.com saying, hey, that was really great that Alan asked that question because I honestly didn't I know what she know. meant. <laughs> hit me. And hit me hard, people. You guys have been hitting me hard, but we're going to do the uh, client email bag on the next episode. So let's mm-hmm. go. Yeah. So, but when you have that in the top section of your website, the key piece that most people are missing is that call to action button. In that top section of your website. Mm. So now, you don't want to scroll down to get to the below. What's beneath the hero? The fold. <laughs> yeah. So I've got some more things on that. But here's the thing. You want to put that call to action button several places as you're scrolling down. Because as you move down through the website, you know, oh, now I think I might want to contact them. Or I'm not really sure yet. Let me keep reading. Oh, now I do. So you don't want to make them hunt for that call to action button. That call to action button is called the cash register of your website. Mm. That's where you start the sales process is whether it is contact us, schedule a call, whatever it is. Uh, But you don't want to have a wimpy call to action button. Mm. So a call to action button, like learn more. Hmm. That doesn't really change. Which is interesting because it seems like a lot of marketing today is to kind of be less in your face, Mm -hmm. but you're actually saying be more in your face. You have to be crystal clear of, oh, I'm reading this and sounds good. What do I do next? It's an act of service to show them this is the next step. Mm -hmm. Wow. She said Wimpy and I went, Wimpy's hamburgers. Remember that? Oh, Yeah. Dating you, uh, Alan, because I watch your episodes, not mine. I'm not that <laughs> okay. I am. Um, all right. So back to the, uh, you go out there and you talk with people and, and they're like, again, it's hard to pick a coach or somebody who's going to tell you a story that's going to help you make the cash register ring. Yes. Tell me who you did. Who, who did, who, who just like, bang, you worked with them and then it lit up. Well, she mentioned the hypnotherapist and I'm actually curious what message did you help create? For the hypnotherapist, is that because, you know, I know two of them here in Atlanta, so that's why I'm interested too. Can they help me not hate my neighbor because of their barking dog? Mm. I don't know, <laughs> but but she but but they but she her her job is to get the hypnotherapist to get you to go there to do right. it. But they're usually about smoking cessation, weight loss. The 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 hypnotherapist that I know again when I heard them, what do you think? The first thing you think hypnotherapist, I'm like you know quack like a duck. And so I met some of these uh, folks who built them. And so Inga Chamberlain is the one I know uh-huh. very well uh, and her uh, husband, Bob. Uh, so they have developed a whole training program around doing that. Is that who you've worked with? No. Mm-mm. Oh, well, you're going to, because I'm going to, I'm going to. Okay. That's that. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, I think just every client that I've worked with has seen some transformation in their business, but it really is how thorough you're using that message. Now you can have your message on your website, but if you don't have a way to drive people to your website, that's not going to do, do you any good. So how do you get people to your website? That's another question is, is do you have a lead generator? Do you have some type of value filled asset you can give people in exchange for the email address? Do you have an ad to drive them in your website? Is your Google business profile connected to your website. And I think for a lot of your listeners that are perhaps maybe in the trades or a local business, that Google business profile is your bread and butter. Yeah. Local business GMB is the way to go. I mean, they don't want to say Google my business anymore, but bottom line is Google wants you to be on Google all day long. Yes. And so we're on it. We uh, we're Google guaranteed. We're Google my business. They don't say it like that. What is Google guaranteed? So uh, as a handyman, we are listed on the Google LSA local service ads and we're verified. So I had to do a video background check, answer a bunch of questions. And now I have a little green check mark that says every time somebody calls you, we get paid Google. But because we served you up because you have good messages and people used you, we're going to keep serving you up. Because that's what Google is all about, right? They're in the information business, information serving up business. That's where you got to absolutely rate yourself up. 
And that's a big thing because it's a long play, but Google LSA, I, I, I found, is starting to kill pay-per-click. Give yourself. Thank you. Yeah. All right, man, we're coming to the end, and I hate this because we have so much more to talk about. We might have to have her back. We might, because she's so close. I'm local. She's local, <laughs> and we like her. She's fun. All right, but you know what? I hate that we don't get the chance to go through our favorite uh, four questions. And so the first question we want to ask you is, what is a favorite book that you would recommend to our audience? All right. Well, I brought a copy of the title because I couldn't get it right if I didn't have it written down. So it is called Unreasonable Hospitality. Yay! I just got done reading it. Yeah. The Remarkable Power of Giving People More Than They Expect. And it is on my nightstand to read. I have not gotten into it yet. But the reason why I'm going to give it to you is I heard Donald Miller a couple of weeks ago say it's the best book he's read in a very long time. And he reads a lot of books mm. and he knows about books. So I heard the gentleman that uh, wrote the author interviewed, and he just has some very Will Guadera. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's the book that he thought was yes. the best. Mm -hmm. He said it's the best book I've read. In so a I long actually time. implemented a couple of those uh, lessons yeah. into my business. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Name one. What did you do? So all right. So we have captains of uh, of hospitality. We have captains of things that are specific to you. Because the unreasonable hospitality thing is, is that if you get your team empowered to provide great service to their clients and do their to their customers when you're not there. So I now have a technician advisory board. We brought this into training where you guys are responsible for making something awesome happen. If you as a project manager feel like that project went well, I want you to give them a gift. You have up to $100. Anything you want to do. You want to go over $100? Just yeah, a me. gift to who? The customer. Oh, wow. At the end. So if you did a great bathroom, if they love bathroom salts, or if we did a great kitchen, or we did a great deck, we want you to give them a great barbecuing uh, kit. Or if you uh, in a oh, kitchen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. And one of my guys, check this out, after I implemented this, mm -hmm. made a cutting board oh, wow. for his customer, made out of exotic woods that he was able to pick up as part of our gig. We, we go around quite a bit and see other stuff. He put them together and milled it all together himself and presented it to him. That's pretty That's cool. staggering. Yeah. Right? Unreasonable. Yeah. Hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. Guadera. Love that book. All right. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Okay. We got to keep moving, right? Mm -hmm. What's the next question? I can't remember now because I'm so B. excited about that Will Guadera one. Yeah. B. Question B. Question customer B. service. Uh, uh, customer service. DIY nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this one? Okay. You ready? Yeah. What's the favorite feature of your house, oh. Alan? You have not been listening. I was testing you. <laughs> you have failed. Before. Yeah. Like 135 <laughs> times, my, Alan. It's my first time. Yeah. What's I just got back from Rome. Rome. Oh, okay. uh, read, 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 read. <laughs> well, sorry. without question, no hesitation, my screen and porch. Why? Because I get a chance to be in nature when I... Without the bugs. Yeah, without the bugs. And when it's raining, like I love going out there, summer evening, rain, like just being able to experience the fresh air. There's nothing that compares in it. And I've... Lamping. Yeah, I've always had a screen and porch since I've lived in Atlanta. See, I, yeah. I don't know. It's called glamping. It is. Dude, we, when I tell people I'm going to my cabin up in the mountains, they're like, so what's it look like? No, no luxury like, mountain house. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going I never outside. Go outside. There's too many bugs. <laughs> I'm like, I can't stand that. Bug, 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 bugs. All right. So we are huge. And we have not talked about this a lot, but we need to talk about this more. Al and I are huge around customer service because we are customer service freaks and we love great customer service. But when you're out there and customer service is not going your way and you're the customer, what is a big pet peeve of yours? You know, I've got a couple uh, that I can relay. One, I was, um, I was at the doctor's office with my husband the other day. And you know, when you do online check-in and you fill out your form and all of that. And stuff. you feel like you should be done by then. Yeah. You feel like you should be done. So what happens is they get, he gets up to the counter and they say, well, let's just verify everything. Uh. So what they're doing is they're calling out all of his personal information in the middle of the waiting room. Okay. So, okay. So your phone number is this and your, you know, bank account ends in the snow. I mean, like I'm stretching that there. Yeah, but, no, I'm with you though. Right. Yeah, but dude, I'm like, dude, zip it, zip it. We, I got a student driver sticker for you, son. But we have, we have HIPAA requirements 
that you know you you're bound to but yet you're broadcasting all of this personal information through the the waiting room i just i i even said to him as the next person came in i said i'm going to go over there and tell them that that this is just not right. it just burned me just burned me did he like that idea uh he, he just well he was dealing with some pain so he, was he, like, he had no idea yeah yeah you're like i'll, I'll fix this so this. we're gonna get you some stickers and yeah. a couple knives no i did not say that <laughs> don't worry lisa we're gonna fix things don't worry by the time we're done your justice will be good oh, justice. Nice. okay yeah it's okay but it's righteous yeah, because they deserved it. it was you know what? That's it. what I say. That's right. if, huh? if they hadn't done that, you know. And you can go with me on Saturday morning. You know, it's like call confession. <laughs> hey, I didn't mean to do that. Hey, hey you know what I'm saying? Hey, all right, let's go back. That is all the right. beauty of your angle of things. Is you got <laughs> confession to just make it all go away. Oh, thank God. I don't know. I'm just your son. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. <laughs> Last question. What is a DIY nightmare story? Oh, my God. Not gosh. a contractor one. I want, oh, I, we like pestilence we like pain fire flooding oh i've got a great one. emergency yeah. services are even better yeah actually we had a great one on that one too yeah, yeah. we did <laughs> yeah so you know several years ago when all these home fix it shows got really popular uh, you know yeah, i can do that too oh yeah and i was really into uh you know there... <laughs> Chris is beating his head <laughs> <laughs> yes, everybody, you can do it yourself. You don't need the trusted toolbox. Trust me, we don't know what the hell we're doing. Forget the fact that we're licensed, that we have some training, we might have some tools. You do it all yourself continually. So yeah, thank but, you. I you know, appreciate it. The Chip and Joanna Gaines, right when they became really hot, you know, watching all of this and you're just like, oh, I want to live in a house like that. I can do my bathroom in a weekend. Well, yeah. since you mentioned it, yeah. I could do my bathroom in the weekend. So <laughs> how hard could it be? So I, one thing I do is I'm a quilter. So I take fabric and I sew it together and, you know, like this, you know, I, I can do that. So how hard would it be to put tile on the wall in a bathroom? So what do you have to do? You have to take off the old tile. So I go in my garage, I get a sledgehammer, I get oh. some gloves and some goggles and I go at it. Yeah. And you think about the guy who fired you. That's right. right. You're like, yeah, <laughs> take that and take that. And oh, by the way, the guy you cut me off, take that one. Yeah, right. Your sledgehammer and the shit out of it. Keep going. Well, it wasn't coming off as easily as it should have. Wow, that's a shock. Yeah, it's not something. So huh. I took a break and then it was a few days. And I thought, okay, let me give it another go. Got my goggles on and do it again. So it was exhausting. And I realized this was not going to, like, it didn't fall off nicely. And like, it was just like a chip and Joanna style yeah. just falls right they're, off. They're yeah. nice. And, they're and the next episode, they're tiling yeah. 24 well, minutes later. And they're done <laughs> in three minutes, right? Yeah. You know, and, and it wasn't smooth. And I thought, oh, this is not going to be good. So I just closed the door and left it. It was the upstairs bathroom. You know, one of those Jack and Jill ones that I left it and uh, had an opportunity. I ran into someone who, um, was a home contractor and just we just happened a conversation I'm like oh by the way do you do this it's like yeah go to floor and decor i picked out the tile we did and so he fixed it up and i oh, get a discount God. if i've started the demo right <laughs> if i do my own demo that's my other favorite one if i do my own demo how much less? and i walk in and there are lines of water sitting there there are open electrical <laughs> things sparking there are there are there are nails sitting out of two by fours. He goes, "What's my discount?" I'm like, "Bro, you just added like two grand to this project because we're gonna die if we walk in this thing." All right. Oh my gosh, Lisa, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. How can people find you? Yes, well, if you're on social media, you'll find me Monday through Friday on LinkedIn. It's Lisa McGuire, and uh, I'm on Instagram. I am Lisa McGuire. Are you basically saying you have office hours on LinkedIn? I do. <laughs> Have and, you heard of that? No. Yeah. I'm wide open, bro. That's kind of cool. But she's that. on Insta too. Come on now. Yeah, I'm on Insta. And then also lisamaguire.com. You can find me there. Phone number 678-520-7660. Lisa at lisamaguire.com. That's everywhere you can find still me. still with us. You heard all that. Don't worry about it. It's in the show notes. Check exactly. it out. Tap it on the app. Do not tap it while you're driving. Unless it's that student driver thing in front of you, right? And then you can hit him. It's okay. It's fine. You <laughs> use him as your bumper. It's fine. But you know what, guys? If you didn't learn something, that's on you because stories hold the day. Even if you're not good at networking, what did Lisa tell you? You got to network. If you want to build your brand, you want to build your business, you want to make that phone ring, tell a story, figure out your story, figure out who it is, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it. Man, let's get out of here. Go make some money. Let's get up that mountain. We got to go. Cheers. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Thanks so much.